Good morning, this is Shelby with Silky Botanicals at the Mugwort Manor in Seattle. Just doing a little update on the cottage style garden. It's late spring and the summer solstice is just around the corner. Two weeks, week and a half. So, right here we have St. John's Wort. Some people, this is technically a weed, but I don't see it as a weed at all. It has a lot of medicinal benefits uh, for the skin and for the body. The cool thing about St. John's Wort, more like the magical thing, is if you pick a bud and you squish it, it bleeds red. And so when you infuse um, a carrier oil, like olive oil or uh, sunflower oil, almond oil, whatever, you infuse these flowers with a carrier oil, that oil turns red. And so it's really beautiful. It's good for uh, low back pain, just general pain. It is... Uh, if you do put an oil, St. John's Wort oil on, you do not want to be in the sun afterwards because they, um, you can get sunburnt because it photosynthesizes. So don't lather yourself in sun, St. John's Wort oil and then go in the sun. But it's great for winter. It's, it's also good emotionally, a pick-me-up. Here we have some fennel that's coming along really nicely. We have our California poppy and our calendula. We have here the um, woodland violet. We have feverfew volunteer. This is another volunteer that just popped up. I believe this is Bachelor Button, which is really special. Peony, more fennel. Some beautiful poppy. And a card style garden. Urbana. This is just, I love the height and it moves in the wind and these beautiful flowers. The um, hummingbirds really love them. Excuse all of my brain farts. I have baby brain being five months pregnant. <laughs> uh, this is lemon verbena. And it's, these are both perennials, and it smells so good. You just kind of tussle the leaves. Mm, yeah, it's like rich lemon. Here's the poppy, or peonies. Aren't they gorgeous? They smell so good, kind of like a, a musty rose. They're so heavy. <laughs> Keep falling over. This is cleavers, um, great to infuse for a UTI, they just popped up by themselves. And all of this here is fireweed, it is a pioneer plant, 
it again just volunteered popped up um, it helps fix the soil with nitrogen fireweed it also gets its name because the leaves and the purple flowers um, help with burns like sunburns or you know a, a heat burn of some sort so look at everything this is everything in its glory um, it will become even more overgrown here and that's totally cool I love that here's the thyme we have our thyme rue sage rosemary this blue here is part of the geranium family it's called crane's bell it blooms for so long it's really cool and it kind of starts to take over but i love that our strawberries have also taken over there's a lot more sage our lavender is coming along um it had some spit bugs but when i released the ladybugs they I mean, they're gone. The ladybugs just took care of it, so that's fun. I love that. Lemon balm. I need to do a... I distill plants and make hydrosols and essential oils. You can, of course, buy those on my website. And they, all the plants are either grown in my garden or sustainably wildcrafted. It's definitely time to harvest and distill some lemon balm, spearmint, peppermint, also mugwort. I have so much mugwort. So some companion planting we have going on. This this white is just the flowers from that's dropping from up there. The beads love it. So companion planting is uh, What's happening here is the rhubarb and the strawberries because we love our rhubarb strawberry crisps. Um, and we planted maybe a dozen or so strawberries amongst the rhubarb. And because strawberries um, are, they, they duplicate so easily. So we've planted, you know, one here at all these and then they hop they send out new shoots to here here's another plant and we could pop this out and transplant it but we're just letting it take over look at all these strawberries we had some strawberries uh, saved from last year's harvest and so I already made a rhubarb, three rhubarb strawberry crisps. Um, but letting the rhubarb kind of get giant and mighty again before harvesting more. Because if you over harvest rhubarb, then you might not get as full of a uh, harvest the following year. And if you don't know, the stalks of rhubarb are edible but not these big leaves. So we just toss them in the compost. This is our path <laughs> that's just about taken over with fireweed. This is, um, evening primrose and strawberries here we have our little colony of aqualicha or also known as columbine they're early bloomer so these are where the seeds are starting to develop and then they'll self seed here's astabel shade loving plant die back every year and then 
in the winter and then they come back in the spring. Here we have some parsley and arugula. So what makes a cottage style garden is having vegetables among the herbs and flowering plants. Here is um, valerian root. It's gorgeous, the hummingbirds love it. It can also be used as a sleep aid, the roots, and the roots kind of smell like stinky socks. It's earthy, very earthy. We have a lot of leeks. These are about two years old. Make my way through here. Here's some more strawberries that are coming along. Look at that, it's so nice. Here's our mighty foxglove. Hummingbirds also love foxglove along with the bees. So to get the most from our garden with being environmentally conscious with the birds and the bees, um, we plant a lot of flowering plants and by helping the bees get pollination and the birds get seeds and, and fruit, this is a crab apple tree, uh, they also help us and provide for us by helping us spread the seeds and pollinate <clears throat> flowers, which then, forgive, then give us fruit. So by planting, you know, so many strawberries we got a lot of berries because the bees you know pollinated everything for us it's a beautiful day yesterday it poured all day well it showered all day and then um, it poured at night. I'm sure many of you have seen these bug hotels. Just another way to, you know, help support mother nature. By helping her, she helps us. Here's a strawberry that's ready to be eaten. Yeah, yeah. That's the first one. We've had itty bitty ones, but these are, this is the first big one. How fun is that? By harvesting this um, rhubarb, it also helps, you know, bring in sunlight to the strawberries. Here's our gala apple tree. It's uh, only had a few flowers and I don't see any fruit on it, unfortunately. Um, but we only planted it last year. And I have faith it'll, it'll do something. Here's some of our mugwort. More cranes bell. Tiny home. Here is our jasmine that's growing here. Oh my gosh, it's blooming. That's so cool. The jasmine smells so good, especially in the evenings. It's called star jasmine. In the evenings is when it releases its scent. Oh. Also, if you have a moon garden, Gotta have some star jasmine. Here's some more of our leeks that are about to bloom and they need to be harvested. We have, oh, about 10 pounds of ground rabbit from our, our rabbits and um, 
ground, just the just the meat. I, we've already deboned it and everything, and we'll be mixing these leeks and then working the leeks into the ground rabbit along with other herbs like sage and oregano. Hmm. This right in front, this is bee balm. It also dies back in the winter and then pops up in the summer. It's a sun-loving plant and it really, the name fits it right because the bees really do love it. Like, it's just, there's probably, when the flowers bloom, which are beautiful purple flowers, they, there's about at least a dozen bees, you know, constantly here. More of, we planted just a, I don't know, a few strawberries in here. And they've just cascaded down and they're just taking up the walkway, which I'm cool with. I'd rather have this than grass. The whole idea here is to have no grass in our front garden um, because we don't need more grass. It's a monocrop. We need more herbs and flowers and vegetables. Grass doesn't do anything and especially if you're cutting your grass then no bugs can like good bugs sure there might be some pesty bugs but if you don't have the good bugs then they can't take out the bad bugs and all bugs are good honestly so if you have grass it's better to let it stay long but why have grass when you can have a beautiful garden like this, right? Why have grass when you can have this? In this garden, I harvest herbs from it all year long. We have leeks growing yearly we have rosemary growing yearly it's a little bird bath so this rosemary stays happy and healthy year round there is some spit bugs on it, but what can you do? We have sage growing year round. We have uh, thyme growing year round. So I gotta harvest these things all year. Use them in the kitchen. Um, like I said, I need to harvest and distill some mint. I've been doing a lot of uh, mock mojitos. So alcohol-free mojitos with the spearmint, um, honey, raw honey, a little tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, ice, and lime. And they're quite delicious. Check out these raspberries. I mean, I planted two. I got them at a garden sale for $5 each, and now, I mean, they're just out of this world. They're creating runners and they're coming up in the pathway and it's awesome here's the valerian yeah it's it is just it's a lot <laughs> We're about to have so many raspberries, and we'll go through one day and we'll pick all the raspberries, eat them, make crisps with them, 
um, blend them in a smoothie and the next day the bush will be full of raspberries again. <laughs> so here's the sage. Here's the flowers that's blooming in the sage. They smell really good. This is blue rue. And here's our thyme. These are the strawberries that I have been harvesting. Here's the cleaver. These little dudes. Mm -mm -mm. Yum, yum, yum. So that is the tour of the cottage style garden in late spring. It's doing really well. If you want to find some of the hydrosols that I distill from my garden, or just check out my aromatherapy website, check out silkybotanicals.net. Have a beautiful day, everyone.